artist. This is the Holy Spirit waterfall. Yeah. And JMS built all of this. He created all of this. 이 작품 같은 경우는 그 선생님께서 그 옥에 계실 때. So while JMS was in prison after being convicted of rape, he designed it, and then the members constructed it. 네, 네, 맞습니다. That's right. Okay. 네. You helped. 네. Okay. 네, 같이 돌도 나르고. 어. 네, 네. 같이 이렇게 하고. 어. 네. This is the medicinal water. 네, 네. Uh, it tastes like water. <laughs> Often when we were in the compound, there were all these people that would come to him with all kinds of things. One of those things that I saw quite often was a woman would come to him with a booklet, like a plastic folder, and in that folder there would be these pictures of different women with some sort of description. Maybe it was their height or, you know, just some sort of information about them. Using these photos of them for him to pray over and, like, um, like you know, for him to kind of um, pick his choose. next yes, victim. Yes, yes. So like a giant lookbook of potential victims. Yeah, like a lookbook. Yep. Yep. You know, you've had an angle. You've taken a side, and you're giving your views on everything. That's what this film, this cult film, is is doing. You know, I would say the same thing about Jesus as the film company who are trying to expose this guy. You know. They hate this leader figure because they think he's doing everything wrong. Likewise, I think Jesus is doing everything wrong. But I also don't believe that this Jesus character is actually a real person. I feel like this Jesus character is just a fictional character that people are promoting. Hence, it's not actually Jesus' fault. It's the promoter's fault, you know. It's the, the cult group, the people in Christianity or, or the Catholic religion who are just promoting him as being the truth when really he doesn't exist. I believe the same thing happened with the R. Kelly case, you know, people wanted to take sides. They wanted to see his girlfriends or the people he had one night stands with, you know, they wanted to see them as victims. All you have to do is push a button on your phone and say, so-and-so did this to me, R. Kelly did this to me. And if you get any traction from that, if, you, if you're able to write a book from that, if you're able to get a, a, a reality show, then any girl that I had a relationship in the past that I, it just didn't work out, she can come and say the same exact thing. Are you blaming this on social media? I'm talking about the power of social media. It all, like, it fed me in a very big way, I think, and I, uh, I don't think there's many people in this world that don't appreciate that kind of um, attention and love. They kept calling them victims and survivors, and, you know, they would have received this kind of treatment being treated special because they were survivors and stuff, and I feel like this would have actually just egged them on to say more bad things about him and taking sides, portraying him to be as some sort of demon. So I think the point you're making is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have never held anybody against their will. I don't need to. That, Why would I? Well, I'm, I'm, How stupid would it never be held for anybody. R. Kelly with all I've been through in my way, way past to hold somebody, let alone four, five, six, fifty, you said, what? How stupid would I be to do that? And yet, if he tried to fight his case, they'd be like, oh, no, you're just playing the sympathy card. You're just playing, you're just pretending to be a victim when you're not. These are the victims. I need somebody to help me not have a big heart because my heart is so big. People betray me and I keep forgiving them. You sound like you're playing the victim here. You sound like R. Kelly. You do. When I listen to you, I'm it just does sound the like truth. you're playing the victim I'm card. just telling the truth. And so they were portraying something in their head and they were trying to force it on the public, force it on everyone else. We heard women talking about um, not just sexual violence, but physical violence, and how if they didn't like the right basketball team, they would be slapped, they would be hit. Um, and this sense of domineering and control, being domineering and controlling. And that's what it felt like a little bit today. He is towering over Gail King, who is sitting there being the consummate pro as he is sort of screaming and flailing and crying and this whole sort of dramatic performance. And it just made you wonder that if that's what he does on camera, you know, what is he like when nobody's looking? You know, I don't see this as him standing up because he's trying to assert dominance over Gail. I see this as him trying to fight the media, which is just many, many people, a huge number of people. He's trying to fight, like, a large group of people who have this belief that he's a really bad person. 
and he doesn't know how to fight it. But they would turn his anger and use his anger against him to, to their benefit to say, you know what, he's doing this because this shows what kind of person he is. You know, he's a terrible person, not someone who's just fighting for his life because he's about to be put in jail for 31 years. And this, in a way, is a type of cult that they were forming because they had this belief that R. Kelly was a monster and they wanted to try and convince everyone else that R. Kelly was a monster. But in reality, his girlfriends got to live in the Trump Tower. You know, they had a nice life. They went places. They did things. You know, he offered them a life that was probably so much better than what they would have had without him. You know, these girls claim that they were trafficked. When you look at it and look at the facts and who knew what, do you think you were trafficked? I think that I was, but the system is so sneaky and well established that even the people who thought that they were doing the right thing and who may have not even known what was going to happen, it just worked anyway. It is, it is sex trafficking because you are being brought somewhere against your autonomous choice and subjected to abuse. The problem is, yeah, if you do tell law enforcement, of course you're gonna say, I chose to be here, and then what are they gonna do, you know? So uh, I think the legal system has to develop a greater understanding of the nuances of mind control and psychological coercion, because if they don't, then there's very little chance that they'll be able to catch anybody mm. perpetrating these kinds of crimes against others um, because the, the people will tell them that it, they chose to be there. These girls claim that they were trafficked, but at the same time they contradict themselves because they also admit that if the police came up to them and asked them to talk about the circumstance, the police would just say that actually they came by their own choice, they weren't forced, they weren't handcuffed, they weren't threatened, they came out of curiosity because they wanted to meet this messiah. Okay, yes, they came because of grooming, but they did come by choice, so it's not trafficking. I think to call this trafficking and to put it in the same league as trafficking would be almost an insult to all the people that literally have had gangs of people come up to them and say, you know, we're going to kill your mother, we're going to kill your father, we're going to kill your brothers and sisters unless you come with us right now, you know. I'm on a journey through Romania to find out why this brutal trade is thriving. <laughs> She was brought to the UK by a man she thought she loved. We're meeting just a few months after her escape, and I can see how traumatized she is. How many men used to come each day? Să zic așa, aproximativ, dacă vineau 10, 20, eram spionată din toate punctele de vedere. El știa tot. Câți bani se fac, cum se fac. Într-o zi, dacă făceam 1000 de lire, toți banii care îi făceam, îi trimiteam lui. Sex trafficking is rife in the UK. I don't think we've got anywhere near the true picture of how many victims there are there. To say that this is the same circumstance and put it under the same title is completely wrong, I feel, because it's an insult to the people who have actually gone through real trafficking. Trafficking is where humans are literally treated like possessions, like items, bought and sold. Someone else has paid for you, and now you have to do what the person says because you have literally no choice and this is not the same situation but I feel like they want to gain sympathy from people they want to gain friendships they want to gain some sort of attention just like the cult was giving them when they first joined the cult you know the cult was giving them attention the cult was treating them special the cult was acting like you know they could be brides they could be chosen by this messiah that they worship so in a way what they're doing now is doing the same thing that got them into the mess in the first place by kind of seeking attention I think to call what R. Kelly was doing as a form of trafficking is a complete insult because that's even less bad because there wasn't, you know, an army of people grooming girls. Okay, he had a lot of fans and maybe some fans were impressed by the number of fans that he had, but you could say the same with, you know, every singer. I think R. Kelly was different because he did take advantage of these fans and I don't think most singers do that. Or at least I feel most singers are aware that they are fans and they don't actually know the person and they might not actually be very nice people themselves. And I think 
R. Kelly is right. His heart was too big that he kind of thought that people were nice when they weren't. I think he should have been a bit more cautious on who he fucked because um, people are not nice and I don't think he, he knew that. So it was almost an innocence on his part, in my view. If I compare this Korean cult group with R. Kelly, you know, I can see similarities, hence why I would call both of them a type of cult. But it's clear that one is far worse because in one of the cases we're talking about a 60-year-old man dating 19-year-old girls in a very non-attached way because he seems to be molesting, you know, hundreds of people at the same time. Professor, you say the JMS has assaulted many women. How many women do you think? According to the reporters of the ex-JMS members, Jung Myung-seok said that, he said like this, my aim is 10,000 girls. 10,000 10, girls. 10,000 girls. So, and I think that he reached his goals. Hence the relationship that they would have had would not have been strong. And I don't think the girls got that many things out of it. You know, R. Kelly's girls were living in a really nice place and having quite a nice life. But if you compare what they received from R. Kelly versus what these girls received, you know. I 100% believe that he was the Messiah. He just lifted up my skirt and put his hands into my underwear. Goodbye, old room. This is it, my last day in Jinsan, Womyongta. This room. I spent so many hours in this room, crying, praying, being angry, being happy, but mostly angry. And now I'm going to say goodbye. There's a massive difference. So I do know that this occult case is so much more wrong. And I do feel that the leader of this occult definitely should go to jail because he's lying to his people about who he is in order to molest them. But yeah, if the people he's molesting don't see it as molesting, then it does become a bit tricky because they would see this act as being their way of being saved. And if someone is going to come against this and say, actually, I, I don't feel this is appropriate or right, you know, they're going to attack that person because they want to be saved, hence they want to be molested. Although not all of them were molested. It was only the brides that were molested. And I feel like there was a larger group of people underneath them that just kind of wanted to keep their leader happy. Hence kind of saw the brides being molested, you know, whether they wanted to or not, you know, I think they kind of just pushed it under the rug because they didn't actually care about the brides. They just cared about, you know, making their leader happy. And I feel like that shows a bigger issue in the community, you know, wanting to worship the person at the top and not really caring what happens to the lesser members of the group. But if these girls are being molested yet still choose to stay in the group, does this mean that they are actually being molested or are they just allowing someone to finger them? Providence is completely animated by that belief that uh, JMS is God, that he is the Messiah, that he is the savior, and that uh, he alone can solve the world's problems. When people recruit for Providence, they're thinking, I'm bringing someone into the truth. I'm bringing them into the light. But what they're really doing is increasing the empire of JMS, creating more and more people that will give him money, provide little compensated labor to him. And basically, it's all about him. It's about people that will enrich him, empower him, help him. Even if it does turn into sex, you know, if they don't say stop or no or try to get out, you know, it's wrong. But in a way, they have to take some of the blame for themselves and they can't just put the blame on everyone else. So it, it is a tricky situation. But at the same time, I think it'd be very wrong to take sides and say, you know, we're going to be on the side of the girls who now know that it's wrong. Because the truth of the matter is that if you would have tried to help them the first or second time that they were being molested, you know, one of the girls said it happened five times. You know, they probably wouldn't have seen it that way. It was only after it happened five times were they like, yeah, this isn't right, is it? And then they changed 
but I wouldn't call it trafficking because they were doing research into this guy for over a year before this happened. So they should have, in ways, just been a bit brighter and be a bit more aware of, of what was going to happen. 